Hey everybody, this is video number five of the eight video series. This one is about how do you set up an airplane to make it fly virtually perfect. And I have probably helped people set up somewhere between 50 and 100 airplanes in my life. And that's, you know, I'm just going over the basics at first, making sure that the thrust angle on the engine's right, just make, making sure that the wing bolts work, you know, just going over and making sure the ailerons turn left when you go left. But I'm gonna dive into what really makes an airplane, you know, really uh, tweaking it out to make the airplane fly beautiful. And I know I'm gonna have people disagree with this and that's fine. I'm just going with my experience. And by the way, I'm sitting in my garage right now at the MSL2, I'm getting ready to break her down. And once a year, I go through everything, the bolts on the engine, I mean the motor, I go through, is the ESC mounted securely? I go through, um, I got a fake ignition system that makes my exhaust pipes blink like it's fire coming out of them. So I go through and check every hinge and everything once a year. I call it kind of the annual for my airplane. And I normally do it right in the middle of the year and it's due. But I'm gonna dive into this real quick. Okay, what makes an airplane easy and fun to fly? It's predictable, okay, it's predictable. Uh, stable, in the air and on the ground. In the air, does it doesn't have bad habits. When it's on the ground, it has no bad habits. Um, when you think about uh, habits, it also has predictable stalls, okay? It's reliable, the engines, the engines or motor is rock solid, the radio is rock solid, and all the systems, if you got landing gears, flaps, bomb bays, whatever you got, those are reliable. So then we talk about the stability of the airplane when it's in the air. Um, if the plane is designed properly and it's built correctly, that's going to be one of the, the greatest things about how stable the airplane is going to be in the air. If it's something you built yourself, you're going to have to ring all that out. But if you built it for plans or built it as an RF or built it from a kit, whoever designed it most likely designed a great flying airplane. Um, but then you need to think about, are the throws correct? You know, your elevator throws, your rudder throw, the aileron throws, how much flap deflection do you get? And then you need to look at the center of gravity and see if it's correct. <clears throat> and I know that I'm gonna get pushback when I say this, but if you set up everything on your airplane right, your center of gravity should be right in the middle or just a little bit aft, okay? Flying nose heavy airplanes creates a lot of problems. Um, and I'll get into that in a minute, okay? Um, so the setup and the ramifications of not setting it up correctly, okay? When you think of throws, a lot of us, um, a lot of us like to see really long throws in our elevator. Um, and the elevator is what your, is your pitch control. So when you think about full scale airplanes, you know, I, I've flown a lot of Cherokees, Cessnas, stuff like that. And they really don't have that much throw. So what does having a lot of throw give us? Well, if you're doing aerobatics, it's great. If it's a P-51 or a P-47 or a Spitfire, a lot of throw may not be what you want. Because if you're landing and you're really trying to tweak that landing perfect and you just wanna barely move your stick, if you have a lot of throws, you're gonna start over controlling. I don't know how many times I've seen warbirds come in and right before they touch down, they blew it up because the, the controls are so sensitive. So, People then say, oh, the plane's tail heavy. It's not tail heavy. You have too much throw, okay? It, it, it's really that. I don't know how many people set up warbirds in airplanes and don't use the exponentials, okay? What's beautiful about the exponentials on an airplane is you can have a lot of throw, but that first 50% of the throw could be like 75% of your stick movement. So that, that, that final Ooh, for that final lot of deflection is the last 25% of your stick or whatever you set it, you know, um, in your radio. But I've never flown an airplane without having my exponentials um, or dual rates. You know, I've on some of my warbirds would set up dual rates so 
that I actually had very little movement of my controls when I'm flying around the air because warbirds shouldn't be jerking around. They shouldn't be doing snap rolls. They should be doing nice and smooth moves through the air. So I'd actually have very low rates when I'm up flying fast, but when I land, I'd go to higher rates. So I've got just a little bit more elevator to flare when I land. Okay, so the exponential and dual rates will tame your airplane. Okay. Um, you should also set those up to your piloting skills. Okay, so what, I'm, what I mean by piloting skills is if you are a beginner flying warbirds, you do not want to real sensitive a lot of throws. You want the center gravity right. You want the engine thrust right. You know, if you've designed a warbird and it's built straight, the center gravity should be right in the middle of where they recommended it. I always fly as aft as I can with center of gravity. The reason I do that is when I'm landing, I don't run out of elevator to flare because I don't have massive throws. I have pretty scale throws. So if you're flying an airplane that's nose heavy and you have scale throws, you run out of elevator landing. And then you say, well, I need more elevator. Well, now you're creating a more sensitive airplane when it's going faster. Okay, another thing is, is that if you've got a nose heavy airplane, a lot of times we'll have a little bit of up elevator dialed into it. And when you're going slow, because it's nose heavy, you'll notice you're holding up more elevator, so you're giving it more up elevator clicks. But then when you're going really, really fast, because of that up elevator trim, the plane's always trying to climb and you're pushing the nose down. So you're always kind of chasing what makes it fly. So I'm just begging you, if you learn to put the center gravity where it's supposed to be and get your throws right, your airplane will fly great. Um, I don't know how many airplanes I've flown and I can immediately tell when I fly it if it's nose heavy or tail heavy. Okay, another way to know if you're flying around a little bit of a nose heavy airplane is when you roll up a, to go inverted, the plane wants to die. The reason that is, is you've got a couple of cl clicks of up elevator to hold the nose up. And then when you roll it inverted, it's a nose heavy airplane with actually down elevator, which is up elevator when you're inverted. So now you're pushing a lot of forward stick and you're like, man, that needs a lot of forward stick to fly inverted. You're probably nose heavy. Landing gear. And look, you will find both answers on Google. Okay. But go to full scale and look at what happens. I have seen form after form after form that says on a tail dragger airplane, you want towing on the wheel, on the, wheel, on the main wheels. Full scale airplanes are either zero or out just a little bit. Negative tow, towed out just a little bit. And I know you're going to go to Google and you might find a full scale airplane that proves me wrong. But I'm just telling you, if you've got tow in, what will happen on that airplane is that as you're going down the runway and those landing gears are coming in, they're actually increasing that toe a little bit. And then if you turn the airplane a little bit like this, this wheel right now is straight, this one's dragging, and you're always kind of chasing it. If you got a little bit of toe out, believe it or not, as each wheel goes out a little bit, it's actually trying to pull the outside wing or the wing that's dropping back a little bit and you'll notice that the plane doesn't really wheelbarrow as much. Well, I don't want to use the word wheelbarrow because it's not a nose on a wheel plane. But, but you want zero or maybe just a half or one degree of tow out on an airplane. Don't make your main gear, if it is a tail dragger, tow in. Okay? And just, just try to take my advice. I, I mean, I'm not going to try to convince you. Some people can't be convinced. Um, if it's a tricycle landing gear, just make the back wheel straight, okay? Uh, the main wheel straight and make your nose wheel should have as much steering as you can get to a certain point. Believe it or not, I always have a separate servo for nose gear steer on most of my airplanes. And I actually have that channel dialed in with an exponential so that as I'm giving it a little bit of movement, it's not real sensitive so my plane's not going over the runway. But when I want to turn around the runway, I can go to like 45 degrees. Um, so here's the thing about what makes an airplane, to me, a model airplane fly well. If it's got a decent wing load, if it's got decent travel in the ailerons, if it's got decent travel in the elevator, if it's got enough rudder uh, you know, to, to keep it under control going down the runway, um, 
you're probably going to have an airplane that you can slowly tweak into flying virtually perfect. But if you fly nose heavy airplanes, all I'm asking you to do is rethink moving that CG back just a little bit, maybe two or 3% of, of what the range is. So if this is the range, keep moving it back until you're in the middle. You will most likely need to dial in a little bit less travel on your elevator. The airplane will do a lot of good things. I had a friend flying an aerobatic airplane that wouldn't snap roll at all. He had it so nose heavy that you could not get it to snap roll. Once we put the CG where it was supposed to go, it would snap roll wonderful. Now, one reason I'm not talking about twins that much right now is because I'm gonna do a video, uh, video number seven. Video number six after this is about acing your landing virtually every time. Video number seven is going to be about flying twins. Okay, um, and the reason I'm not talking about setting up twins right now is because there's just too much to talk about and I'm trying to keep these videos somewhat under control in the length they are. So that's pretty much it. Now look, when I set up my giant scale airplanes, they will fly much different than a small airplane. So believe it or not, I will have a lot larger throws on a big airplane because there's a lot more mass to move than on a small twitchy hyperactive um, ADHD airplane. Okay, believe it or not, big airplanes are 100 times easier to me to fly than small airplanes. And if you're gonna take a small, agile airplane and have 45 degrees of aileron and 45 degrees of elevator and 45 degrees of rudder, you could have a heart attack ready to happen. Keep in one things that our brains do, especially as we get a little bit older. There, and there's studies on this, we end up having a little bit more of a delay. And I used to read that it was about a tenth of a second when we're like 18 to 30, but by the time we're in our 40s, 50s, um, especially in your 60s, you're getting into that half a second to three quarters of a second delay from when your brain tells you to do something and your hands are reacting. So what happens if you've got an airplane that's real sensitive? You have a little bit of delay, and then when you go to re react, you normally will overreact. And when you overreact with a pitch sensitive airplane, you end up if you pitch up a pitch sensitive airplane right as you're getting ready to touch down, you almost instantly approach stall. The best thing you can do is fire a wallet, put the nose down level, and just go around. Okay? If you're flying you know, up in the air and you have an airplane that is built right, it should fly on rails just about all the time. Now this is if it's not your own design. If you design an airplane with a really small vertical stabilizer back there and you wonder why the back end's always moving around, that's just your design um, and you need a bigger elevator, I mean a vertical stabilizer. So that's this, that is it for this video everybody. The next video is on landing and I've had that requested like a million times which is a lie, a lot. Um, and then it's twins and the last video is a secret. So um, that's it. Thanks for watching my videos, everybody. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you next time. Be safe. Rock on.